HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. And by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we take a look at the 2016 Hillers Boys soccer team, the school committee gave an update on the high school athletic fields, and the fourth annual Live for Evan 5K had a great turnout. But first, here are some happenings in Hopkinton you should know about. At the Board of Selectmen meeting on September 13th, the board appointed Nancy Peters to the Woodville Historic District Commission for a term expiring June 30th, 2018. They also appointed Eddie Lee Schaub to the Personnel Committee for a term expiring June 30th, 2019, and Curtis Morrison to the Personnel Committee for a term expiring June 2017. The board also continued a public hearing for the Upper Charles Trail Committee trail naming until October 4th, and the selectmen approved the pledge of a liquor license to Foster Street Liquors LLC. Foster Street Liquors will be at the location of the former Old Town Liquors at 68 Main Street. Also at the selectmen meeting, they pushed the Hopkinton Center for the Arts addendum to their lease regarding distribution of alcohol at the facility to a future meeting, and the board also reviewed responses to the questionnaire from the Charter Review Committee. In the first game of the season for Hopkinton Hillers football, they took on a Wayland. They played the game at Medway High School due to field conditions at Hopkinton High School. The Hillers trailing 10-0 in the third quarter until Will Abbott does this. One more to go. Will Abbott down the right sideline, reservation for six. Great, made up for a couple of those drops with a fantastic return, and I was gonna question his judgment by not calling for the fair catch. Abbott from the Wayland 43-yard line and to the end zone. The Hillers also tacked on a two-point conversion. Wayland scored another touchdown towards the beginning of the fourth quarter. Wayland misses the extra point and it's a 16-8 game. The Hillers would strike again towards the end of the game. Kelleher connects with Abbott. About seven yards for a first down. Kelleher with the snap, he goes back to throw. He lost, went into the end zone, Abbott. Yes! yes. Touchdown, touchdown, Will Abbott. The touchdown was 11 yards, but the Hillers need a two-point conversion to tie the game. Can they do it? Weaver hidden there. Oh, he's got Abbott. Could Abbott come on, on a jet. On. Could be on a jet. Nope, he's squeezing out. Low Little. snap. He's, it's there. Oh, nice oh. play. Keller looks for Abbott again, but the defender was ready for it. Hillers lose a thriller in their first game of the season, 16-14. At this past school committee meeting, the committee addressed the athletic fields at the high school. The school committee heard from Buildings and Grounds Director Al Rogers. Um, but I, I obviously, there's a number of parents um, that we've been uh, speaking with over the last several days. Uh, and just obviously want to apologize um, for the state of the football field and the other fields um, uh, within the school district. That's obviously something we're all disappointed in at, at this point. Um, and uh, moving forward, we are going to put in 110% to make sure uh, the fields are in playing condition for the remainder of the fall and for spring sports. So um, I do apologize. It is frustrating, but we are working on it um, daily. At this past school committee meeting, the committee addressed the condition of the high school athletic fields. So um, with the severe drought and heat conditions um, and repairs needed to the irrigation systems, the athletic fields have suffered over the past summer. Um, there were issues identified last summer with irrigation and wells, and I requested and received funding in uh, the FY17 budget to make those repairs. 
Um, we made pairs over the summer to um, we did different um, mm -hmm. scales of, of, of work to uh, five the five wells two of them were completely rebuilt um, at this time the irrigation system is up and running and we've um, done some remediation to uh, to game fields including aerating seeding fertilizing and, and extensive watering uh, the fields are on their way back uh, field five should be ready uh, field three should be ready for next um, uh, next Friday's football game um, and we'll continue to um, irrigation work and field remediation uh, throughout the fall and uh, and in the spring and, um, and I also echo um, Mr. Gosha's um, concerns and and our apologies and um, I'm feeling uh, terrible about the whole thing. The Hillers football team were forced to move their first two home games to Medway High School because of the condition of the field, and a number of other Hillers sports teams have had to play at the Fruit Street fields. About field 10 and some of the other fields, are those also being having remedial work done on them to bring them up? Um, field play? 10 was another um, uh, field that was recently irrigated and seeded and enrolled. Um, and um, that's it's coming back a little slower, but sure. um, it's, it is coming back. So, thank you. Anybody else have questions? I have a just a mm -hmm. random budget question. So, when we have to have an away game that wasn't scheduled, do we have any issues paying for anything associated with that? Do you have to? Are well, we going to see like a budget hit because it, of it, this it's kind of thing? The, the cost to go to Medway is not substantial. Okay. It can be absorbed within the. Okay. But, but we're also service. renting fields at, at Fruit Street. It's not going to go without a budget hit, and we're going to have and to make the air rating and seating. We're going to have to make decisions as a result within within our budget constraints. Um, this is a priority, as as uh, Mr. Ghosh stated. Okay. So this is a priority, and we understand and do not minimize how important it is for kids to have safe and well cared for fields to play on. We really value our athletic program, and so even though it, it's going to be at a cost, um, it's at a cost that we didn't anticipate and we're going to have to make some decisions about things that perhaps we won't be able to do. Okay. And then the wells, because the town's in a drought state, because we have the wells, that's where So I know people that. have been asking about that as well and we did get permission okay. um, to be able to water because it was, it is wells. One of the things that I also think is not understood is that even though we were working on the irrigation system all summer long, um, there were also challenges, and so the, the assumption is you have wells, why weren't you watering? Um, because we were at the same time struggling with and dealing with issues with the wells as a result of problems with the pumps. So these were all things that Mr. Rogers had budgeted for. I think he told us um, earlier that there had been $20,000 budgeted towards that. It wasn't that he wasn't aware of it. Um, but if people drive the loop road and, and see they the see the watering, they, know they, drought, they we do have it, private wells, and that's and we got permission. And we did hear that them. just today. Yes, so it's important I didn't even for people. You heard that? I was just asking. No, we did. Okay. Yeah, right out there on the okay. field. So it, it's it's fair enough question for people who have been told they can't water their flowers. Um, okay. So yes, that's the answer okay, to thanks. that. The school committee has announced they have opened an application process for anyone interested in joining a subcommittee to help improve the athletic fields at the high school. Right now on our website, hcam.tv, you can view a letter addressed to Hopkinton residents from Director of Buildings and Grounds, Al Rogers, addressing the field situation and what will be done with the fields going forward. A lot more to come on HCAM News, including a look at the 2016 Hillers Boys Soccer Team and highlights from this year's Live for Evan 5K. Also, Courtney will let you know about the many programs coming up on HCAM with the HCAM Insider. You're tuned into HCAM News. Don't go anywhere. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Do you have what it takes?
Will you make a difference? Always an adventure. Police and fire working together. Utilizing the latest technology. Do you have what it takes? Welcome back to HKM News. The Hillers boys soccer team started off the season on a high note as they took down Ashland at home 4 to nothing. This year's team features some great experience and some talented players. Here is a further look at this year's squad. Uh, I've been playing soccer for about 14 years now. Uh, I play club year round and this is my third year on varsity. I've also been playing soccer for 14 or 15 years now. Um, same club as Dan, GPS, and this is also my third year in varsity. Oh, I've been playing soccer just like these guys, basically as long as I can remember. I think since we were like four. Um, and yeah, I've been playing club soccer ever since, year round. Um, just like these guys, I've been on the team for three years. Yeah, this is my 13th year at Hopkinton, both as a teacher and a coach. Um, I love working with the kids here. They're always really positive. They work hard, so it makes my coaching job easier. We can come out and just work on soccer stuff. And uh, there's a lot of school spirit and student support. You know, we had a game at 5 o'clock last Friday evening uh, at Fruit Street, and there's a great turnout from the student body. So it's just a really encouraging place to uh, coach. The Hopkinton Hillers boys varsity soccer team started off the season on a high note as they shut out Ashland 4 to nothing. I think it was important to the guys to start off with a win. The last couple of seasons we uh, started with a loss and just to get that positive momentum I think was the most important part of it and I think uh, scoring a few goals also uh, reinforced uh, everything we've been working on in practice. On Tuesday, September 13th, the Hillers picked up another win against Medfield and improved their record to two wins and one loss. I asked the coach about the expectations for this year's experienced roster of players. Yeah, you know, I think the expectations are always built into the kids. Um, I really don't have to do much to uh, push them to be motivated to play. They always come in motivated and they want to win for the school. And uh, so that's usually not a problem. Uh, all right, I think the team's looking pretty good this year. Um, compared to teams in the past, we've got a lot of strong seniors um, and then a lot of strong sophomores too, a lot of young guys that have played club for a while. Um, and I think compared to years past, we move the ball really well, quick passing, one touch, and a really good combo play. It works well. We're definitely a passing team this year. We're not a long balls team. We like to keep the ball on the ground, and we have a lot of guys who take really good touches. And should be good at possessing this year. You know, we have uh, a lot of talent, a lot of depth. Uh, we've got great senior leadership, uh, positive attitude, all the ingredients of a really good season. I think our defense this year is really strong. Um, we have a good mix of guys in every position, young and old. So I'm looking forward to working with them the rest of the season. We also have Brian Gone coming back from a shoulder injury in a month or so. so. So what are the Hillers working on in the early season practices? We've worked a lot on kind of our overall shape as a team, kind of offensively and defensively. Um, and I guess just moving the ball around like we like to do, um, getting shots off, combo play, stuff like that. Going forward, we're going to work on just putting the ball in the net because we have a lot of opportunities and we got to got to finish them. As soon as we do, we're going to be lethal. Don't forget, you can see a lot more Hiller sports on our website, hkm.tv, as well as full volleyball, football, and soccer games on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash hkmtv. The fourth annual Live for Evan 5K recently took place. The purpose of the event is to raise awareness for heart conditions and raise funds to help improve the quality of life for patients and families affected by cardiac disease. The event is in honor of Hopkinton High School graduate Evan Girardi, who passed away during his freshman year of college due to cardiac disease. The fourth annual Live for Evan 5K took place. The event is in honor of Evan Girardi, 
who was born with a congenital heart defect. All week long we've been tracking plus 15 or 20 people per day over where we were the first year, which was our record year for attendance. So if the rest of the week went okay, we should have broke our record of attendance. We were shooting for 600-ish, over 600. Uh, we'll see how it came out later today, but yeah, it's fabulous. Evan would face many challenges, including heart surgery, but always kept a smile on his face and pushed forward. Evan passed away due to heart complications in 2010, but Evan's friends and family continue to remember him through the Live for Evan organization, which serves to help families or people affected by heart disease. So my name is Whitney Mullen, um, and Live for Evan was started about four years ago, a little background on the organization, and one of our childhood friends who passed away from congenital heart disease in 2012. Um, so this is our fourth event, and we're raising money to support families and patients affected by cardiac disease. And our latest program is uh, apartment housing project. So we raise money to open up apartment buildings for families that travel into the Boston area while the child receives um, treatment from Children's Hospital. They get to stay in a place um, that's, you know, comfort of their own home right next to the hospital. So we're fundraising. We opened our first apartment building this year. And the money from this event will go uh, towards opening another apartment in Boston. Um, I do the marketing for the event, um, and we, were, we grew up with Evan, so we're really excited to have this be the fourth race for the year. Well, all the, the co-founders of Live for Evan grew up with Evan. Um, he was in my third grade class, that's when I met him for the first time, and we became lifelong friends. And I think the type of person that Evan was is the reason why the, the volunteers and, the, and the, the, the organization itself is able to sustain itself, because everyone has such passion for remembering him in the way that he deserves to be remembered. And um, so it's, it's, you know, it's taking a horrific situation uh, from when he passed from his congenital heart defect and trying to um, create something positive out of it and, and help other people uh, because that's what Evan would have wanted. And so it's, it's a terrific honor for us to, to commemorate him in this manner. And um, so it's, it's been fantastic. My personal role for the organization is the treasurer, kind of the numbers guy for the organization. Um, which works out well because that's what I do uh, in my day job as well. Um, so I'll tally up after, after today's over, I'll tally up all the donations, all the registration numbers, all the sponsorships, and um, you know, we'll see where we're at. And I, as I look out the field right now, I'm, I'm very confident in how we're going to end up. The Live for Evan Memorial 5K always has a lot of community support and sponsors. I just want to add um, a thank you to all of the, we have so many, we have over 100 volunteers each year and the list keeps increasing and we have our, our we have over 600 runners so it's just an immense amount of support from the community, from our sponsors, from vendors, from everyone that's pitched out and helped over the years and just we're really thankful for the community to continue to grow and it warms our hearts and we're, we love spreading heart happiness so we just hope we can continue to do it year to year. So yeah, we want to thank all of our sponsors this year that includes Select, Middlesex, Savings Bank, Landscape Depot, TJ supplied the burgers and dogs, Loyola University where uh, Evan went to school down in Maryland, um, CVS Pharmacy, new to town, was our platinum sponsor. We also want to thank Gil Bain, Unibank, also a new addition, um, Arteriosite Medical Systems, Yogurt Beach for having a great event on Thursday night, um, Corporate Communications for all the signage that you see around the field today. Also, Aereo Marketing, who um, puts together our website and does a fantastic job at that. Scott's Landscaping, at Phipps Insurance, and Liquid Graphics Design. So a huge thank you to all the sponsors. Uh, we really appreciate ha uh, having you guys. And what you guys do is what allows us to open up apartments in the Boston area. And without, without your help, we wouldn't be able to continue to open up more and to continue to grow and uh, do this year over year. So we very much appreciate it. This year's Live for Evan event featured a few new fun family activities. We got two new, two new events this year. We got a cornhole tournament going on over in the end zone by the high school. And we also have a, an obstacle course, which you can probably see in the background here for kids K through 8. And uh, those are going to be events that we have continuously every year. So if you couldn't make it out this year and you want to play cornhole next year, we're going to have it. If you have kids in K through 8th eighth, eighth grade and they're going to, they want to go to the obstacle course, bring them on out next year. The Live for Evan organization this year set up housing near the Boston Children's Hospital to help people who need a place to stay while a loved one is being treated for a medical condition.
Yeah, so the big uh, project for us this year was we, uh, we have leased a Live for Evan uh, patient housing apartment down uh, next to Children's Hospital on the 14th floor of the building next to, to uh, Children's. We've uh, fully, fully paid for that apartment. All the utilities were paid. TV, electric, heat, uh, fully furnished. And now um, we have that available for families in need who can't afford housing in the city when their kids are in, in patient care and children's. And so we've had uh, three families in there since April 1st. Uh, we're currently in with somebody right now. Uh, they've been there three months. They have a child that's going through a lung transplant process, which is quite, quite lengthy. Um, and we, uh, we pick up the cost of that. If they can't donate a nominal fee for that, we pick it up and, and pay for it. So all the funds that we've got from here is mainly being driven to, the, to that apartment. So it's a Live for Evan apartment. Um, it's been a great experience for us and we're taking, taking the, the money and the efforts we've had and taking it right down into the patients and the families, which is what we want to do. It is a busy September making programs here at HCAM. To fill you in with what to expect on the HCAM channels, here's Courtney Taylor with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Friday, September 16th at 8 p.m., Christine Curran discusses the Hopkinton Lions Club and her background in emergency preparedness on a new Hopkinton coffee break. I saw the article in the mm -hmm. paper asking for volunteers and um, met with the Ashland Lions and they said that they had a number of people that were in Hopkinton that wanted to were interested in joining mm -hmm. um, and so that's how it got started again. On Saturday September 17th at 1 30 p.m. it's girls soccer versus Ashland. At 3 p.m. the boys soccer team goes up against Ashland and at 4 30 p.m. the Hillers football team takes on Wayland. On Monday, September 19th at 7 p.m., the Charter Review Committee Public Forum will air live on HCAM TV. On Tuesday, September 20th at 6.45 p.m., the Board of Selectmen meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, September 21st at 12 p.m., the Seniors, Hopkinton Police, and Hopkinton Fire Department compete once again for the title of Bocce Champions in Bocce Throwdown 2016. At 8 p.m., Bob Cloutier shares how he became a minister at Faith Community Church and discusses the care ministry on All About Hopkinton. Dick turned to me and said, Bob, I've been praying, and I think God is calling you to become one of the pastors of the church. And I went, what? <laughs> I did not see that coming at all. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, can we talk with the deacons about possibly pursuing this? And I said, okay. <laughs> On Thursday, September 22nd at 7 p.m., the school committee meeting will air live on HCAM TV. If you want to know more about all of our HCAM shows, head on over to hcam.tv connect, where you can subscribe to our HCAM Insider Newsletter. Or to find out about events happening in town, you can sign up for our daily news updates. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website hcam.tv as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Right now on our website you can view the latest news on Hiller Sports and also read about some great events coming up soon in Hopkinton. If there is a photo, video or story idea you would like to share with us, feel free to email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and thank you for watching HCAM.
stone.